Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are joined by Biju Krishnan, Joint Secretary of the All India Kisan Sabha, and we are going to be talking about the ongoing farmers' agitation. So, as we know, the agitation began on November 26. There have been multiple rounds of talks. The farmers are very clear on what they want. They want the repeal of the three agricultural laws, which were passed in a very undemocratic manner, in fact. Whereas the government has been dithering, there have been multiple rounds of negotiations. So, Biju is here to talk more about this. Biju, thank you so much for joining us. And first question is. Like I said, the farmers are clear. The government has been having, has been inviting them for multiple rounds. In fact, on the day of the Bharat Band, there was even this whole, uh, for lack of a better word, show Amit Shah actually calling them and the farmers' leaders and talking to them. So, and yesterday there was the uh, offer of a written assurance. So, could you maybe tell us, from the sense you're getting of what is what is exactly the government strategy? What are they offering, and why are the farmers rejecting it? See the. Uh... Three uh, acts uh, which have been brought, they are uh, all uh, to be seen together. It's a package and uh, it is uh, totally uh, uh, in the direction of government withdrawing gradually from public procurement and ensuring assured uh, minimum support price and so on. And also uh, total freedom for the cor corporate companies to hold um, uh, cr uh, different uh, crops as well as vegetables, oil seeds, pulses, etc. Uh, unlimited qu uh, quantity of that. And the Contract Farming uh, Act is also leading to a situation wherein the companies will decide what has to be grown on the land of the farmers. So it, uh, farmers have very clearly understood that it is an act to promote profiteering by big agribusinesses, especially they have termed these as the Adani Ambani laws, Adani Ambani acts. And this uh, very clearly, every farmer, while the uh, government and the prime minister claims that the farmers are being misled, the poor farmer in our country, across the country, have understood one thing, that for whom these acts have been brought. And in these different negotiations, very clearly, farmers have put across uh, the viewpoints that they have, farmer representatives have put, put across. The government is trying to only do some window dressing or uh, just uh, uh, cosmetic changes to it. And uh, for instance, uh, allowing, uh, saying that they will allow the farmers to go to the civil courts if there is a dispute and so on. The matter is not just that. The um, uh, entire uh, system which existed earlier, that is being done away with. There were some issues with that. There were problems with that also, but it is literally throwing the baby with the bathwater. That is what this government is doing. And uh, uh, no efforts to strengthen public procurement or uh, assured minimum support price for all crops. Even now we know how minimum support price is not uh, accessible to all farmers. It is a very small section which is getting uh, the, uh, that too mainly in wheat and paddy that they are getting this minimum support price. Uh, there is no expansion of the procurement uh, mechanism and so on. Already we see that the even before these acts have come into um, uh, being, we find that big companies like Adani's uh, Agri Logistics, they have been uh, uh, setting up silos. They have uh, uh, the land use has been changed in uh, different states like Haryana to benefit them. Were they anticipating these bills, these acts? Is it that the corporate companies, Adanis and Ambanis, are actually controlling this government's policy making? That is what we are uh, questioning. And uh, the government behavior the, uh, in the negotiations with the farmer organizations, apparently the Home Minister said they have some compulsions. What is these? What are these compulsions? It is the strings that are uh, uh, deciding, strings held by these corporate companies, which are deciding the policy direction of the government. That is why farmers are very clear. Last six years, the uh, repeated promises of the government and the betrayals are uh, very fresh in their minds. That is why this never before kind of unity and struggle is going on. Absolutely. And with you in this context, I want to ask you about the latest offer made by the government yesterday, which is that there would be a written assurance, uh, a written assurance of an MSP, MSP. So what are the possible loopholes that come with that kind of an offer? No, actually, you see, a written assurance. The Firstly, it is not an MSP-specific uh, opposition that we have. We have a problem with the entire uh, model, the paradigm that they are trying to impose on our country. 
Firstly, uh, it is a federal uh, system. State governments have not been consulted. Agriculture is a state subject. It has not been uh, state. Uh, none of the states have been consulted. No democratic discussions. You rightly mentioned how it was pushed through the parliament. And then uh, it, these are the uh, repeated prescriptions of the WTO, World Trade Organization, different uh, uh, countries like United States, European Union countries have been pressurizing India. That is what the Shantakumar Commission put forward. And they have given a legal shape to it with these three. So this entire paradigm, now many journalists are terming this as a 91 moment for agriculture. They forget that 91 moment for agriculture has, uh, according to conservative estimates, led to more than 4 lakh farmers committing suicide. We very well know what is in store for the farmers. In fact, uh, the uh, farmers of our uh, country, they realize what is going to happen. That is why if you see the major uh, protests in Punjab, which has happened, in, uh, there has been a uh, consistent protest ag against the Reliance and Adani's and uh, such. They realize uh, in simple terms, this is the Adani Ambani acts and what is going to happen to their futures. Absolutely. Right. And this college, I also wanted to ask you about uh, how you, the sense of the mood on the ground you visited the protests, of course, and this is actually a very unprecedented protest in the sense of hundreds of thousands of farmers, of course, gathering. People have compared it to the great protests many decades ago. Of course, we also know that over the past few years, the anger by farmers has been building up. The AI case especially has mobilized across the country. So how? what is your sense of the kind of mood on the ground of the farmers? See, I have been involved with uh, student activism and then with the Kisan Sabha now almost for 25 years. I have not seen this kind of a movement and the solidarity that is uh, being generated around that movement. Uh, the uh, cross-class alliances, the kind of um, varied number of uh, different uh, organizations coming together. Uh, firstly, the different farmer organizations under the All India Kisan Sangar's Coordination Committee, the Punjab organizations, and uh, 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 also the trade unions and different mass organizations, civil society groups coming out in support of the farmers. This is something I have never seen before. And if you see the uh, uh, farmers from Punjab and Haryana who are mainly at the two uh, Tikri and um, Singhu borders, also those at the Ghazipur border, they have all, they know it is a long haul. It is not something, uh, they know that this uh, government is um, bent on pushing the corporate interest, but they are also prepared to go uh, uh, till the, uh, take the fight to the finish. You, we have seen how the people have come well prepared for a longer stay here. And uh, in all states, even other, the government has been trying to portray it as a uh, Punjab specific struggle. But you see the Bharat Band, the kind of response it has got across. That is something, and consistently from June, first week onwards, we have been consistently on the move, our uh, different organizations. And it is uh, not just uh, I, uh, All India Kisan Sabha, many smaller organizations all coming out. M the effigies of Narendra Modi, Adani and Ambani on 5th were burnt in thousands of places. This is the the anger of the masses coming, uh, which we are seeing, witnessing in this moment. And in coming days, certain other actions have been called for. On 12th, there is a massive protest uh, that is called 14th again. And uh, uh, to, uh, uh, for instance, uh, at toll gates against Reliance, Adani, uh, 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 different uh, establishments, we are going to have this protest. So very clearly, against corporate loot, and against a government which facilitates corporate loot, we are all uniting. And it is not just the farmers, because the consumers are also going to be affected. And in, in the lockdown period, all sections have lost their incomes, their big loss of incomes, unemployment, and hunger and uh, poverty. So all these sections understand what is going to happen with these acts. There would be price rise, there would be um, this uh, disposition of farmers, agriculture workers would lose their uh, opportunities uh, of employment. So uh, that is why there is a greater uh, coordination, greater unity that has emerged and uh, uh, in a synchronized manner, 
a large number of organizations of the working class, of the uh, farmers, agriculture, labor, uh, Dalit, Adivasi organization, women, youth, students, all coming together in this protest. This is like um, never before. We have not seen any such protest before. Absolutely. And we do in this context, the right wing is uh, really taken aback by this as well. And we've, of course, seen over the past couple of weeks, the kind of propaganda models that they use first. There was, of course, Khalistan. Like you said, there's this whole thing about this being only Punjab centric. There's this thing about it being only a rich farmer led movement. And of course, you also experienced this yesterday when you went to address a student uh, body at IIT Madras. And there were a lot of trolls who came into this meeting, indulged in a lot of disruption, were determined to prevent you from speaking. So at this point, why do you think the right wing is uh, right now so scared across India? See, very, see, very clearly, uh, when you look at the earlier struggles, which have happened around the CA or uh, on the, the different such issues, the government tried to divide the uh, people along communal lines. It was suppressed in different manners. You, we have seen the campaign around uh, urban Naxals or Pakistani agents and uh, so on. Here, they made that effort in the name of uh, saying they are Khalistanis, some of them uh, also claiming it is the communists uh, are behind uh, this and so on. But uh, despite all these campaigns, people are not ready to accept that. And uh, the unity has remained. It is uh, uh, through the talks that unity has remained with the main organizations which are behind this struggle. They have retained that unity. The government is repeatedly trying to uh, break the unity in different uh, ways that has not so far succeeded and uh, uh, they have lost the debate very clearly if they are uh, sure that they are uh, on a uh, strong wicket they should have initially consulted with the organizations with the state governments if it is in favor of the farmers if they could have convinced there was enough time for uh, consultations and all the meeting yesterday in, uh, by Ambedkar Periyar uh, study circle in IIT Madras, it was an open meeting. There was enough scope for people to come at the end and ask questions or debate or uh, uh, totally debunk my arguments. But what they resorted to is ex um, uh, abusing language, loud ruckus, and then also uh, putting up uh, uh, pornographic material there. And this is the uh, level to which they are stooping. That only uh, exposes that it is coming from the top, the language used by Amit Shah and the uh, prime minister, uh, calling someone Khalistanis or uh, anti-nationals, uh, Pakistan any agents and a different thing. You uh, And the, a section of the Godi media, the corporate media is also uh, towing the same line. That their bucks are carrying on the same uh, the level of discussion that uh, they are engaging in or the narrative that they are trying to set is so uh, uh, that is the manner in which they are uh, willing to take it. But they are really rattled by these struggles. Clearly. These struggles have rattled them. And the fact that the working class, the large section of the uh, uh, people who would actually experience price rise in co uh, coming days, they are uh, standing behind the farming uh, uh, community, behind agriculture workers and farmers. And that is also uh, act, uh, rattling uh, the Sang Parivar and the BJP RSS. So uh, we are seeing a response in this manner. Absolutely. They are unable to uh, point by point rebut any of the, the simple farmer of our country is able to counter them on each and everything. They are asking questions. If farmer is getting only 30 or 40 rupees for Arhar Dal, uh, for, who's, uh, for which the minimum support price is more than uh, uh, 60 rupees. And why is Adani selling Arhar Dal at 220, uh, that is, a, uh, or with a huge profit? Uh, why is consumer having to pay? These questions are being asked by every person in India now. So that is something their troll armies or their um, uh, the IT uh, team uh, is unable to answer. Um, uh, they have failed miserably. Even the uh, Godi media has not been able to because the, the uh, solidarity with the farmers is something which uh, people realize that even in a lockdown, the farmers have uh, under a th threat of pandemic have produced 
it is their toil and investment that leads to a situation where uh, people of our country need not go hungry to bed. Thank you so much, Vijay, for talking to us. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching news. Thank <laughs> you.